Welcome to Breaking the Silence with Dr. Gregory Williams. Dr. Williams is the author of the acclaimed book, Shattered by the Darkness, Putting the Pieces Back Together After Child Abuse. Dr. Williams is on the senior leadership team at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. And Dr. Williams travels the United States speaking and training professionals, parents, and victims about the importance of dealing with abuse and personal trauma head on and not being afraid to break the silence of your own personal pain. Feel free to call in to tonight's show at 888-627-6008 and speak with Dr. Williams and his guests live on air. And now, your host, Dr. Williams. Well, good evening and welcome to Houston, Texas, and for another edition of Breaking the Silence. And look at this. Look at this sunset behind me. Is is God not awesome? Look at that. I just love it. That's the reason I just love living here. I can just sit and you don't need a TV in our place. You just look at it and go, wow. Is that not gorgeous? Beautiful, beautiful. I tell you what, uh, we are getting feedback right now. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and mute our guest right now just for a second. It sounds like the microphone is feeding back. It's great to have you tonight. We are just uh, looking forward to tonight's guest, and I want to let you know before we get into tonight's program, I want to let you know what's happening uh, next week, because you will not want to miss it. I've been really looking forward to this. Uh, It's Cornelius uh, Johnson, and he is the CEO of Slim Strength, and that is a sports apparel company. And he is the CEO. He is the big dog there. And uh, he owns that. And he has a wonderful uh, sports apparel. And I'm hoping uh, my shirts come in this week so I can wear one next week. Oh, look at the helicopter going across the air. I love that. Anyway, uh, he'll be on next week. And he's going to talk about his wonderful life story of um, pain, of, of hurt, of being in um adoption uh, mode in different homes and foster care and and that kind of environment. And we're going to be talking about that and how he overcame that to be a very successful businessman in our country today. And that will be next week, next Sunday night at 8 p.m. Central Time, live from Houston. And um, looking forward to that. When we, that'll be the last Sunday in April, believe it or not, we're getting ready to roll into May. And our May agenda is just full of some great, great people. And uh, we just keep adding them on. If you'd like to uh, comment tonight, if you'd like to watch us uh, live on Facebook, our Shattered by the Darkness Facebook page, you can get on there. I have it going on this computer right here and watching my son, uh, comment with different people. If you have a question, feel free to go on there and write out your question. If you want to send it to uh, them through the Shattered by the Darkness Facebook page, Curtis will come on the latter part of the program and share if there's any questions, or we would just love to talk to you live at 888-627-6008. Just call in and uh, the wonderful people in California, the, the radio producers will patch you right on through and uh, we'll be talking to you live right here on the air. Uh, before we get to our guest tonight, uh, every now and then, I like to just uh, talk about a few things that, that's going on in life. And if you ever come across a moment in your day or in your week, we you just wanna say, I quit, that's it. I quit. It's over. I quit. That's I'm not going to do it anymore. I quit. Ever been there? Ever had a week like that? I have. Uh, I, I have those frequently. But I want to give you just a couple of things this coming week that I really want you to go. I quit and actually quit them. 
Jot these down real quick. The first thing I want you to do to quit is quit trying to be somebody that you're not. One of the greatest challenges in life into yourself in this world is trying to be like everybody else. Stop doing that. Quit trying to be somebody you're not. There's always going to be somebody younger. There's always going to be somebody better looking. There's always going to be somebody smarter. There's always going to be somebody skinnier. But there's never going to be another you. And I think just be yourself and the right people will love you. So quit. I give you permission this week to quit trying to be someone that you're not. Here's another thing I want you to quit this week. Quit trying to control the uncontrollable. Oh boy, am I preaching to myself right now. I ought to have a mirror right here in front of me because I'd like to control things. I need to quit that. Some forces, some things in life, some medical reports, some issues that happen to you that when you wake up in the morning are going to be there are out of your control. But one thing I want to let you know that you do control is how you react to those things when they're out of your control. The best thing you can do is let go of what you can't control and invest your energy in the things that you can. Like, for instance, your attitude. Wow, ding, 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 this is hitting me right between the eyes. I don't know about you. Quit trying to be somebody you're not. Quit trying to control the uncontrollable. And here's another one that I, that's really beat me down this week. I'm gonna be honest, and I like this program because it helps me heal myself. Quit talking down to yourself. One of the major reasons we fail is self-doubt and negative self-talk. Take an audit just to listen to the script that you are playing about yourself inside of your mind. And all of those negative thoughts, replace them. Replace them with something positive. I promise you tonight, you're going to hear a guest that's going to have our entire show tonight that's going to talk about some negative things that happened to her. But it didn't change her attitude. Matter of fact, now she is so joyous over overcoming those things. And I honestly believe replacing the negativity with positivity can take you so much farther in life. And it will, over time, it will literally change the trajectory of your life. The place that you're going to end up being is if we can just replace all that negative stuff. So quit, just quit. You know, I just want to quit talking down to yourself and watch how far it gets you. Last one, and then we're going to get to our guest. Quit criticizing other people. The negativity that you bleed out towards other people is going to gradually creep back in and cripple your own happiness. Now, let me repeat that. The negativity that you bleed out towards other people people will eventually creep back in and cripple your own happiness. It will cause a decay in your happy vessel and it'll start leaking out when you start throwing out negativity and criticism to other people. So stop worrying about the flaws you see in everyone else and focus on ourselves. Let it be constant growth. Let it be improvements in your own life. It keeps you so busy that you don't even have time to criticize other people. 
So in your world this week, I give you permission to quit. I just quit. Just quit those things and start being fired up with what, what life has for you. And life has such a wonderful journey, a wonderful adventure, a wonderful destiny. If you can just figure out how to take what's happened to you, repackage it, and put it on a positive route to help other people. And tonight's guest tonight, Leah Samorin from New York City is going to absolutely, I wanna introduce her tonight. She is a proud breast cancer survivor. And one of the things I love about our program is that I try to literally go through and look at every type of pain that can be obtained, trauma, impact, uh, negativity that can be obtained in our lives and find somebody that has defeated it so they can offer hope to the ones that are listening to the program tonight and kind of leaning in. And I really want to encourage you all to lean in tonight. Leah Samorin, are you in New York City tonight? Is that where you're located? Can you hear me this evening? Let's see, I'm going to unmute you now. Go ahead and unmute if you would, Leah. Hi, good evening, Doc. Hi, good evening. Finally, How are you? yeah, here in New York City. New York City? That's awesome. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, it's an honor to have you with us tonight. And, you know, I have been on your website and I am just, you cannot hear anything about you without it becoming an infectious joy of what you have for life now. And I just want to tap into that tonight. I want you to share your story with us tonight. But before we go into what's happened to you, what is, and this is always the way I like to start off with a lot of my guests, what is the one thing that you are passionate about that gets you up every morning to hit your feet to the ground and go, that's what I am made for today? What would that be in your life? I really wanted to, to give back and inspire others that having cancer is not the end of the world. You know, if you really know uh, to design and make your own pattern, pattern and a formula, you can beat anything, whether in your relationship, diseases, or whatever. You can make it happen. Uh, just always... Uh, align the committee in your head when you woke up in the morning and say, hey, I want to do this and that and go for it. So, and thank you doc for bringing me into your show. I'm really so happy to inspire and able to touch others and save well, more lives. I tell you, you have a, you have a great following and uh, the people that are on your uh, board of directors and the people that are in with your paddle for the cure and all the things that we're gonna talk about tonight, seem like would be a hoot to be with just around to sit around and have coffee with because there's a lot of enthusiasm in that group. Now, now Leah, tell me a little bit about you, you personally and tell me a little bit about the journey that has taken because I promise you probably, I, I don't know for a fact, but you wasn't always like this, that you did go down a road that you wasn't expecting to go down. So people don't know who you are tonight that's listening in. Share us with your story, what's happened to you, how you overcame, and maybe some tips that other people can uh, learn from you and your experiences, if you would please. Okay, first of all, I'm a proud breast cancer survivor. I was diagnosed uh, 2004, and I really questioned God why I was hit by cancer because I was like in the peak of my career and everything, but boom, it's just like, what's going on? What's wrong with me? What have I done wrong? So then, um, it's, it's, like, uh, it's like a matter of if ever you have to accept it, right? So when, when my doctor told me that I have cancer, I was like, I've, I was screaming and I said, what? 
and I was given six months to leave. So what I did, instead of whining that I'm sick, I go to, uh, I have three things in mind at the time. Uh, I will ask you, Doc, I have three things in mind. Uh, I have to go to the church, right? I have to go to the cemetery or go to the bar and get drunk. What do you think? Where did I go at the time? Where did I go, Doc? Well, there's no doubt in my mind. You probably went to the church. No, 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 no. Oh, you didn't. It's, it's the cemetery. You went to the cemetery. Of course, because I love public speaking. So I did uh, my, my speech there. I feel that that is the best speech I ever had. So I, I, I threw all my emotions, you know, and I said, hey, to the left, uh, do you live, uh, do you believe that I will be given six months to live? To the right, do you believe that I will be given six months to live? Okay. Okay, no chirping. And then I turn around and I find a stick and dig and I visualize myself the word acceptance. And when I turn around at the graveyard from that moment, it's so easy. My, it becomes light because I accept what's going on with me, you know? So, and, and through my journey, it's really a hell. My journey is really, really, really a hell. So uh, even two of my two of my landladies kicked me out from the apartment. One kicked me out for reason that she's afraid that I will throw up in her new carpet. Imagine that. The second one, the second one, um, uh, uh, really kicked me out too because uh, they are afraid that I have nobody, and so. That time, the landlady told me, Leia, do you have a place to live? Uh, that is a day, the day before she kicked me out. And I said, yes, but actually I don't have a place to live. So I went to this Filipino store. I get the flyer and I pray to God because I'm very religious and my faith to God is like in the level four. You no. Know? So I said, uh, if I call this, if I call this number, hopefully God, uh, they will accept me. So I called the number and I knocked at the door and, uh, uh, and then the, the, the lady opened the door and at first she won't accept me, but the daughter said, mom, cancer is not contagious, accept her. Actually, they don't have a place for me. So then they accept me and then I call my friend who is a priest and I said, Father, Father, somebody accept me, but they are not Catholic, they are Methodist. And I said, the pre my friend told me, Leia, go, whoever accept you, just go. So I did go and that lady and become my, my parents now with a couple who become my parents. Even I don't live with them anymore, but there's the relationship, you know? And, and I'm really happy to, that for me, it makes me become stronger. Uh, God give me cancer and I, I return and give back to the hospital where I was treated. That is the reason why the Paddle for the Cure is a Dragon Boat team of Elmhurst Hospital. And that is the hospital where I was treated. Yeah, that's the hospital that you were treated at. Okay. Yeah. I tell you what, we're going to take our first break, uh, Leah. And um, on the other side of this break, I want to find out um, how emotionally um, that news of hearing the C word uh, <laughs> affected you. <laughs> um, how you dealt with it, how you kept the positivity, if you did through it, and what did you do to get through those dark days? If there's somebody right now dealing with it in their own life that's listening to the program tonight around the world, that could be saying, but wait, 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 I, I don't have positivity right now. I need, <laughs> I need to know how to get through the day. And I want you to think about that for a second. On the other side of this break, we're going to talk more about that. We're going to drill in a little bit deeper with Leah yeah. Salborn in New York City, <laughs> right yes. on the other side of our first commercial break. Don't leave us. We'll be right back. Bye. 
finally coming very soon will be the release of my second book in the three-part trilogy, Overcoming the Darkness, The Roadmap to Hope. Now this book will be an in-depth look at the many different facets and emotions that a person goes through when they're experiencing anxiety and trauma in their life and they're simply searching for hope. And an exciting addition to this book will be a companion journal guide that will come along with it. Also, there's going to be something that I'm very excited about, the youth version of this book called When Dark Clouds Come, The Roadmap to Hope. And it's going to be an excellent tool and guide for teenagers dealing with stress in their lives. So stay tuned for the release date coming very, very soon for these exciting new resources. Now back to Breaking the Silence with Dr. Gregory Williams on the BBS Radio Network. Welcome back. I tell you what, the Overcoming the Darkness book, I am working so hard on finishing this and I uh, appreciate your patience. I wanted to get this out a long time ago, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to refine that and the youth version. I'm really excited about that when that comes out. So uh, just be patient, continue to be patient. It's going to be coming out here pretty soon. Lena Samora and over there in New York City, that wonderful place on the other side of the world from Houston. But um, so when you got the news, um, from your doctor that this was breast cancer. You had six months. Be honest. What was one of the first things that ran through your head? Well, it's like a turnaround of my life, right? But then I said, no, this, there must be something. There's a reason behind this. So How long did it take you to get to that point? Oh my goodness, it's like I processed myself like maybe a month, right? Okay. So what okay. I did because I want to make sure the people's listening, they're not going, wait, it took five minutes. There's a process, right? <laughs> There's a process. There's a really a process that you have to fight with your emotions and everything, right? Uh and how can I tell my family? Because I do, I do not want them to have the burden. So I process because I love to write. I keep on writing, right? So I'm really a fan of Joel Austin. And I hear the story of Dodie Austin that she had cancer. So what I did, I follow her. So I place all the pictures. I feel like I'm in a cell in the room, right? Like uh, in the corner of the room, right? So I placed the uh, pictures, beautiful pictures, happy moments. And I, when I woke up in the morning, because I'm very close to my dad, uh, I opened the window and I look up in the sky and said, hi, dad, hi, grandma, something like that. And I said, thank you, Lord. So, uh, and then I go to the, I go to the mirror. I process myself, always word of affirmation. I said, uh, today is a great day. Uh, and then I said, I am, I am powerful. I am strong. Um, I can do anything. And something like that, I always talk to myself. I always talk to my, to my twin. Instead of uh, thinking about the negative that is, you know, uh, is in your head, I... I aligned myself, all the committee, and I said, hey, uh, uh, cancer hits me, and, and I'm not, I'm a winner, and this is not going, it's like. Okay, so you, you took, uh, while I kind of talked about Robert at the beginning of the show, you took the negativity and turned it into filling your mind with affirmation. Uh, yeah, with affirmation, you know, but uh, uh I said there's a reason behind because uh, uh, our family has really have a pool of cancer and diabetes. I have diabetes. I've been in diabetic coma, right? So I passed already my five lives from diabetic coma to car accidents, breast cancer, and COVID. I feel like I'm not human. I feel like I'm a cat with nine lives. So I said I'm not going to waste the four lives left, you know? So that is why I really wanted to inspire others that there, 
there is something, there's a solution for everything. You know, I think it was interesting because I think when you first called me, uh, we were on the phone and it wasn't 30 seconds when you said, I have literally had five lives that I have lost. <laughs> and it's like, no, wait, wait, wait. Uh, hello, who is this? Uh, let, let's start this over again. Uh, so repeat those five. Uh, one's obviously breast cancer. But in order, what was the five that uh, you feel like you have overcome in your life? What, what was the first one? Diabetic coma. Diabetic right. coma. Two car accidents. Two, two car, car accidents. accidents. You couldn't just do one, huh, Leah? You had to do two. <laughs> two car okay, accidents. so that's two. Yeah, because of my diabetes, uh, sometimes I lost my vision. You know, uh, right. it's blurry, right? Okay. So then, breast cancer. Okay. And COVID. COVID. You had COVID. Yeah. Yeah. It was How do you deal with that? March. March. That, that was the. the the month that uh, uh, it was hit, the you know, it's like the the thing. I was in the hospital March twenty sixth. Yeah, yeah, twenty sixth. How long was you in the hospital for? Mm, I I was there only for a day because I I I did like uh, I got a deal with God. I saw that I was taken by the ambulance. Right when I was in the hospital, I really see like. There are a lot of patients, right? And I noticed the doctors that treated me, the nurses are not using, you know, there's a um, lack of PPE at the time, right? And I feel like there's, I'm in the hell. It's really hot inside. But I said, no, there's a reason behind this. My family are calling me. My friends are calling me. Leah, you have to go out from the house. I feel like you surrender yourself. And I said, um, and I said, no, no, I'm not going to to uh, go. I know I have a reason, right? So, and uh, and I said I got a deal. And I told God, God, if I die today, what will happen to my family? What will happen to the charity? I accepted the charity with all my heart when I opened the Bible and the message that you give me is 2 Corinthians 9, 12 to 15. If you really love me, serve my people. So I feel like, uh, uh, I feel like, okay, uh, I have to accept the best. Uh, I have uh, God, God, will take care of my business and I will take care of businesses. That is my thoughts. Okay. Yep. So we're back to the, um, the uh, understanding and hearing of your diagnosis. Uh, and you started going through the process of replacing negativity with positive thoughts, with affirmation, with understanding. And I think I, I understood you to say that you heard about Dodie Osteen and her overcoming cancer. And you you followed uh, and read what what she did uh, and used the affirmations that she prays about and through. Uh, what what else is did the process involve with you uh, in your journey during those times uh, while you were first diagnosed? Uh, can you repeat up what you said? What yes. you said? Uh, what other parts of the process were involved with you dealing with the the trauma? of realizing that you had uh, the diagnosis of breast cancer, six months to live. Besides just affirmations, what else did you do to get through it? Uh, well, when my doctor told me that I, I was given six months to live, uh, instead of worrying, I go to the blessed sacrament and okay. I told, and I knock and I knock and I said, no, I don't believe in my doctor because I know God, you are my healer. I know this, there is a reason behind why you hit me by cancer. So during that, the times, and I said, okay, when I beat the, my, I've been through diabetic coma. And then when I woke up on the fourth day, fourth day, right? I see the world as different. Everything is beautiful, right? So I made a decision to go around and give my smile to everyone that I meet. Sometimes uh, I meet 
uh, people that are rude to me. And I, I still give my smile to them. After all, it doesn't cost any penny to give your smile. So I keep on giving my smile to everyone. And then for some reason that there are also people that uh, saw me that I'm too bright. Well, well, I said, okay, I will just lend you my sunglasses for, for them to see the light within me. Okay. <laughs> That's how I deal, you know? <laughs> so you lend them your sunglasses uh, because you were too bright. Okay. <laughs> I'm too bright. If they can, uh, if they can. So, so did you find that people were offset by your positivity in the middle of tragic news? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you cannot, um, uh, you cannot please everybody, right? They have different minds, you know, but uh, if times that, uh, times a lot of critics, so what I do, uh, I turn around and I told myself, oh no, I'm not going to go in their space. I have to go on my space and nobody can take the joy in, inside of me. That's, that's good wisdom. And, and I think that's something that, like we started out at the beginning of the program, we need to quit <laughs> talking down to ourselves, talking down to everybody else. It doesn't do us any good. And the positivity does make a difference. But tell me, uh, Leah, how did it, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to, to get you to go to dark places, but what got you through those nights that your positivity wasn't bubbly? You wasn't the brightest person, so bright you had to wear shades, that it was really <laughs> starting to get you and wear on you. How did you get the courage and the strength to get through those days? Okay, because I'm a person that I'm very religious, right? During the darkest moment, I visualize myself, I, I visualize Jesus on the cross, right? And I said, this is only a duck. My pain is only a duck. So I said, pain is my friend. And the more I visualize Jesus on the cross, my pain becomes lighter. So it's really, uh, it's like, it's like amazing that I'm not afraid of anything because I know Jesus is always on my side. And the formula that I created, I have three, three things that I really wanted to share to all, okay. right? Number one is God is central. Do you believe in that? God is central, right? God is central. Second, yeah. Second is Go for second opinion. You agree, Doc? Okay, go for yeah. second. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did you do that? I did. I did. Actually, okay. after my breast cancer, uh, my doctor said that I will undergo uh, for ovarian cancer, but I don't believe. So I go for a second opinion. I went to MSKCC. Okay, number third is uh, create your own journey make your own design. Once you are in the cancer university, right? You will fill in or place in the system that it's really the fact, right? That you will undergo surgery, right? Chemotherapy, radiation, and hormonal therapy. And I got all, I got the package. So what I did, I just, uh, I just enjoy, I just enjoy, accept the waves and just ride the surf. There are times that we have the ups and down kind of moments, but once you get the hang of it, you'll catch the perfect break, right? And finding yourself, having a great time despite the odds. Okay, so those are three great processes. God is central get a second opinion, and then create your own journey in this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> create your own design. <laughs> your own design. Okay. Tell me what came out of you that you didn't know was in you after you experienced what you did. What came out? You're like, wow, 
I didn't know I had that in me until I experienced uh, this diagnosis. Yes, it's like I feel I feel much stronger, you know. And then the one person that really, really encouraged me uh, of this charity is one person, my best friend, who is our PFC hero. Without her encouragement, ah, oh, I will give up the charity, right? And she never, never showed me her weakness the time when we are working with a charity. But that time she's already in stage four leukemia. Oh la la, we go and research at the library. And, uh, and she, it really reminds me, and she's always telling me, Leia, I really wanted to follow you. And I really wanted to create my foundation to help leukemia patients through your guidance. And she told me, Leia, you are my boss. And I said, uh-oh, no, no, no. I'm not your boss, I'm your leader because I cannot consider myself as a leader if I cannot create more leaders like you. So she really, really wanted to be a paddler. But uh, a week before our kickoff, 2017, she never made it. She passed away. Mm. Mm. She passed away, yeah. And every time that we have our kickoff, we, I promised myself that uh, it, it will be in honor for her. So we throw carnation flower during our kickoff just to honor her. And without her encouragement, I do not know. <laughs> I give up, I give up the charity. Because we are all volunteers and you know, volunteers come and go, you know, and it is the fact that nobody's going to help you without being paid, right? They will just help you, help you once in a while, but at the end of the day. I'll do the finishing touches. But I'm so thankful and grateful with the new sets of volunteers that uh, are inside my circle in the charity. Oh, they have a good heart in helping me and pushing me to the next level and bringing the charity to the next level. That's great. Now on the other side, we're gonna take our last commercial break. And on the other side of this, Leah, I wanna really find out about the the charity, how it started, what got you involved? Was it after that you was diagnosed or had you always had an interest to be in that and find out more about it? And I believe you have uh, some campaigns going on right now that I want to share with the world. Uh, not only Paddle for the Cure, but this art uh, thing that you yeah. have on to. So we're going to talk about that. If you want to get involved in the conversation, feel free to get on Facebook. Uh, Chatter by the Darkness Facebook page and comment to my son Curtis, or you can just simply dial in at 888 627 6008. Don't leave us. We'll be right back for the final segment with Leah Salmoran in New York City. More with Breaking the Silence right after this break. HCI Publishing that brought you the international bestsellers, A Child Called It, and the Chicken Soup for the Soul series comes the latest book by Dr. Gregory Williams, Shattered by the Darkness. This book describes the horrific abuse that Dr. Williams suffered at the hands of his father for over 12 years and the damaging effect of keeping everything silent about that abuse for 30 years. If you're looking for that book that you can't put down, then pick up a copy of Shattered by the Darkness by Dr. Gregory Williams at all Barnes & Noble stores, Amazon, and Books A Million. Now, back to Breaking the Silence with Dr. Gregory Williams. Shattered 
Shattered by the Darkness just celebrated our second year anniversary being in publishing, and uh, we just broke uh, the into the top 10 this week uh, on the bestseller list uh, with Amazon, which happens periodically, so it's still going well. I appreciate everybody's support on that with Shattered by the Darkness book. Leah uh, from New York City, do you believe, before we get into the work that you do now, the charities, do you believe that things happen to us as human beings to form us into the right lane in life for the rest of our life? Is uh, that been true with you and the charities that you work with now? And tell me how you got involved with these charities. Okay. Um, because um, I myself, I used to attend conferences, summit. The thing that really hit me is one conference that I attended in Washington, D.C. I'm involved at the National Breast Cancer Coalition. So during the time, uh, being part of the team that uh, we get the approval of the 258 million budget, it's like, it's a great feeling because we are like 800 delegates all over US with doctors, scientists, researchers, uh, politicians involved. And we do the lobby at DC. And it really gives me, it really touched my heart. And I said, wow. And I've been part of the team for the approval of the budget. And I said, hmm. I need to do something. And I decided, because I'm a creator, I love to create. Even when I was a kid, I, re I'm, I like to debate, I'm a student leader, you know what I mean? So I said, I need to create something. So I attend conference from one conference to other because that is how you learn. It's like, you cannot, um, uh, you're going to be a doctor if you don't study, right? So it's like a process. So uh, if there's an opportunity for networking, I go boom. If there's an opportunity for conference, I join. And that is how I learned. So then when I went to the trip in Vermont to attend this yoga, uh, uh, like it's like a conference too. And they showed us about dragon boating. And I said, well, well, this is so fun because I love water, right? So it's dragon um, boating. Boating, right? So you're so boating like a dragon. Yeah, okay. like in the okay, boat. Okay, all right, I'm with you. Okay. Paddlers, right? So I said, when I go back to New York, I need to find a team and join. So I decided to join the dragon boat team but they are not survivors it's not a survivor team it's a group of uh, it's a group of uh people that uh, are just doing the dragon boating you know yeah. but they are not survivors and my former team a group of survivors and the founder is my friend she's my classmate a swimming class at the uh the jcc jewish community center Jewish Community Center, and she told me, and she told me, Leia, you don't belong on that ship, uh, on the boat. You have to jump ship in our boat because you know we are not normal. And she's my friend, right? So I keep on joking. If you're not normal, I'm normal, she said. And that story of her, she passed away, and that story of her is circulated all over the world. And she's very strong, and and. I feel like she's helping me too. That is my former team from the MSACC. So then uh, this dragon boating was created 2013 with a group of volunteers, but they don't uh, give like their full heart. You know what I mean? Full heart and uh, they're not serious about it. And I said, I don't like that my name will be attached with the people that, you know, just come and go or something. I don't do that. So. I rebuilt it 2016 with only $25 deposit in the bank. Think about it, $25, right? Because okay. I'm very like, I, I'm very positive, right? And I said, 
mm, so I love to write, right? So I do the do's and don'ts, something like that. So along the way, oh, my journey was like a hell. And I pray to God, because I'm a lector of St. Patrick's Cathedral, I'm also a lector of St. John of Arc in Queens. And after service, I prayed to God and I said, God, uh, what's going on? It's too much for me. I like, I'm like a one-man show. Just tell me, just show me a sign if I'm going to continue this, right? Because I have no help and something like that. And after I leave the church, I saw a guy walking in front of me with a white t-shirt. And that says, Many are called, but few are chosen. chosen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I tears in my eyes. I just look up in the sky and I said, yes, I accept it. And from then on, my journey was like light, very light. Because for me, if you are working from the heart, if you are working for the heart, it's like, because if you're working, oh, I just wanted to get paid or something like that. I work in the catering company, but then my I didn't place my heart into it. I could hit, I hit like three days, like what trade show, 80,000 or whatever, but I really cannot give, give my heart. It, but this charity, I'm not paid, I'm only a volunteer, but I could even work like, I work like an owl, like uh, uh, keep on writing like three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, and I don't care because I love what I'm doing. It's a lot different when you actually have that passion in your heart. <laughs> it's passion. not work. It's, it's, it's a joy. Not work. That's it's right. Not you're work right. At all, right. It's not yeah. real work at all. Because, and like, so, like you just said, you're called. That's a yeah, whole different yeah, ballgame. Yeah. Yes. Because for me, because for me, we have different gods. Uh, God is fair. God is fair in spreading the gifts, right? It's upon us. It's upon us to, to expand it, right? Because, uh, like, for example, if he calls me, but I, I, if I don't listen, that's not going to work, right? But he chose me, right? He chose me like David, you know? So I accept it with all my heart, with all complaints, so I keep on going. But it's like a great, great feeling when you accept it from your heart and you could really find the touch, his touch. And you can't imagine you will, you will meet a lot of great people along the way, along the way who will help you. You know what I mean, right? So, right. So this is the paddle for the cure, NYC. Yeah, NYC. Yeah. Okay, what does that mean, Paddle for the Cure? Do you guys do this one competition a year, one fundraiser a year, or is it throughout the year, or how's that work, Leah? Yeah, throughout the year, right? So throughout the year. Uh, since we're new, right, 2016. So Paddle for the Cure NYC is uh, is um, special support uh, support support organization for breast cancer survivors. Uh, we offer a unique survivorship program that uses recreational dragon boating to manage treatment side effects of breast cancer survivors and to promote hope and to promote a positive, uh, positive lifestyle organized by survivors ourselves. We, we, paddle our, we paddle our way to recovery to each other with a tremendous group of supporters and uh, paddling enthusiasts along our way. That's great. What about this Art for Life campaign that you have going right now? What's that all about? Yes, uh -oh. this is, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to promote. Because for me, since um, uh, part of my survivorship uh, survivor, survivorship. I do believe in arts, right? It's part of healing. It's like uh, the three items that I believe in, that I believe in is through the arts, right? Um, uh, like writing is part of healing too, right? Yes. And, and the water, water is life, is part of healing. Water and then music, that is part of healing too. Uh, three items that I have a strong beliefs that I'm fighting for that is like 
through water, right? Through water, plus living a holistic lifestyle, plus clean environment equals zero cancer. And I'm not going to stop. And I'm going to fight for that belief. And, you know, with that belief, I could inspire others and even save more lives. Now, here, this okay. Art for Life. Art for Life. Art for Life. Can you see it? Okay. Yes. Art yes. for Life is one of our partners, Ridgewood Bank, right? And of course, we are the team of Dragon Ball team of Elmhurst Hospital. This Arts for Life will be, it's still ongoing. People could register, right? And then the announcement of the winners will be April 30. So the registrants could submit photos, paintings, and drawings related to water sports, frontline heroes, or hope. The okay, so, so they can do it in three different mediums, uh, drawings, uh, Painting. paintings, or photos. Yes. And it needs to have something incorporated with water, uh, frontline heroes, which I'm assuming is healthcare workers, uh, first call responders, things of that order, those frontline heroes like that, and... Uh -huh. uh, then, or something that deals with hope. So if somebody around the country wants to get involved with this, they can go to your website. Mm -hmm. well, I'll leave the website to be able to go and find out more about this. Because we have lots of artists that listen to our program that they want to try to get involved in this in the next week or so, because it's coming right down to the very wire. Uh, how do they get in touch with you to know more about it? Okay. Uh, they could just go to our website at www.pfcnyc.org. For more details, they could shoot us an email at info at paddleforthecurenyc.org. So the deadline of entries, there's a deadline of entry for sure. It is on April 26, but the announcement of winners will be April 30. Uh, there will be a live coverage at Ridgewood Bank, and the artwork winners will be donated to, to Elmhurst Hospital. And so they could register, register today. And it doesn't have to be somebody in New York. It could be anybody in the country. Yeah, local, international, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. So it's pfcnyc.org? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, paddle for cure nycorg pfc nyc.org NYC. and the arts for life all the information you're holding up right now show you how to register if they want to submit does it cost anything to register yes yes it has a cost for 20 dollar only yeah. okay. okay they could submit uh one one entry two entries or whatever uh, as long as they could pay 20 dollars you know so that's how you raise money for the cause okay fantastic yeah. Leah, it was awesome having you they're showing me that we're about uh, 30 seconds away from uh being over i appreciate the program so much thank you for for sharing your journey thank you for sharing your enthusiasm your tips and techniques and may god just bless you as you just keep on promoting and passing on that positivity to the people in this in this world. And I hope you get lots of people that register for your event. And they need to do that tonight or tomorrow because you only have a week left, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Leah. Yeah. It is great to have you from New York City being with us tonight. Thank you for, for joining us, okay? Thank you, Don. Let me know how it goes. I, I, I'm gonna be watching and see who wins. That's awesome. <laughs> and well, wait let for you know book, next Don. week, uh, do, do what? Wait for my doc. I'll wait for my book. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do. God bless. Thank you. We want to let you know that next week's going to be uh, Cornelius uh, Johnson. He will be with us 8 p.m. Central Time live from Houston next Sunday night, as we always want to close the program out each and every week, no matter what's going on in your world, no matter how dark it gets behind you or in your life, in your world. I want to let you know, folks, there's always hope. There's always, always hope. No matter what the diagnosis is, there's always hope. Thank you for joining us. See you next week right here for another edition of Breaking the Silence. Have an awesome, awesome week. God bless. Good night.
Thank you for listening to Breaking the Silence with Dr. Gregory Williams. To contact Dr. Williams, dial 832-396-6525 or email him at shatteredbythedarkness at gmail.com. And don't forget to join us each Sunday night at 8 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Pacific on BBS Radio Station 1 for the next episode of Breaking the Silence. Thank you.